Closed captioning for Justice and Law Weekly is provided in part by the Clifford Law Offices in support of quality public television for the Chicago area. I'm Bob Clifford, president of the Chicago Bar Association. Welcome to another segment of the Chicago Bar Association's Justice and Law Weekly. Mexicans are the largest ethnic minority in the United States today. Mexican culture has influenced everything from our food to business transactions, and trade between America and Mexico has grown substantially and more frequently U.S. courts have to interpret Mexican law. Our relationship with our southern neighbor is of extreme importance both culturally and economically. I am honored today to welcome Mexican Supreme Court Justice Fernando Franco Gonzalez Salas. Prior to being appointed as justice in 2006, he was a law professor and served as the Under Secretary of Labor and Social Security. He has held many distinguished positions within the Mexican government and in academia. Justice Franco is the author of and co-author of several books and articles. In addition, I'm delighted to also welcome Salvatore Cicero, president of the Hispanic Lawyers Association of Illinois. Mr. Cicero is the founding partner of the Cicero Law Firm PC in Chicago, and he practices law in Mexico and the U.S. He has received numerous awards, including the Martin Luther King Jr. Dream Award for his public service. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you so much sir. for being here today. It, you, you're, it's a delight to have the privilege to be with you, sir, and uh, I want to welcome you on behalf of the CBA, but also all of Chicago. Uh, it is our extreme pleasure to have someone like you visit our great city. I hope oh, it, you're having a nice time. It's my pleasure, sir. Thank you, you know, very much for the invitation. And, and uh, well, we, and we invited you because you graciously hosted, uh, you and members of the court in, in Mexico hosted uh, the Chicago Bar Association over a year ago uh, in Cancun with our uh, state's attorney, then president of the Chicago Bar, Anita Alvarez. Uh, and at that time, uh, she extended the invitation for you to come, and you took us up on it. That's right, sir. It was uh, really great to be with them in Cancun yeah. last year, and we promised to pay back the visit, and, and we are here to exchange you? experiences and to try to understand better our respective legal systems. Yes. And uh, I know you uh, have met uh, uh, during your visit with uh, bar leaders, and uh, last night you met with uh, uh, a bunch of law students. Uh, was that a, an interesting experience for it, you? It was a wonderful experience. Yeah. You well, know. Well, why, did you why did you like it so much? Well, because it was a very fresh meeting. Yeah. You know, They asked whatever they wanted about the Mexican legal system, right. and I'll try to answer the questions. Yeah. So it was a nice encounter. Well, one of the encounters that uh, uh, citizens in your country enjoy that we don't uh, hear is uh, your proceedings, your court's proceedings are on TV. We, you can, I can turn right. on the TV and watch what you're doing. That's right. As far as I know, we are only the, the Supreme Court that is, our sessions are publicly uh, uh, seen. I mean, uh, they are public uh, sessions. And then we, uh, we have, in addition, a TV cable channel. Right. So you can see our sessions in uh, real time. You know, you can watch them. Right. And uh, another thing is that we discuss and resolve the cases publicly. A lot of, so so we, we call that transparency, a lot of transparency That's right. there. That's what we, we did so. But I don't get to vote. Like, if I don't like what you're saying, I can't call in and say, hey, I want to tell you a different point of view. No, sir, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. And we decide only the 11 justices there, in bank. Okay. And there are 11 justices. We are 11 justices, okay. right. Uh, and are you, how do you get elected? Are you appointed? We are appointed by the president and elected and named by Senate. Okay. But you, uh, you, one of the things that I found remarkable was that you have term limits. You, yes. You, you, uh, we, you're like only one term, is that right? We are elected for 15 years term. And, and what do you think about that? You know, that's a hot debate in the U.S. in many uh, seg sectors, whether it's in uh, uh, law or politics. Uh, you know, we, we, they want to kick everybody out of Washington and <laughs> term limit them. Uh, why do you pick 15 years? What's your, your well, thought about it, that? That was the average 
of the terms that the minister had before 1994. Okay. When we had a big reform, constitutional reform. Right. The, before that, there were 25 justices at the Supreme Court. 25? 25, that's right. Wow. So they reduced the number to 11. Right. Th that was the number when the, our constitution in 1917 was uh, uh, voted, so they came back to that number. Yeah. Yeah. Judge, you mentioned the constitution. One of the things that we talk a lot about here is trying to teach our young people about uh, their government, about our democracy, about our three branches of government, civics. Uh, is that at all a concern in, in Mexico that the uh, young people don't know uh, their heritage of law that, and freedoms that protects them? Of course, sir. Yeah. I think that's all over the world, but especially in Mexico, you know. We have been through a process of changes in the three last decades, so uh, this is a, a very important aspect for us, mm -hmm. you know, and we tried. As you must know, we have electoral institutions that you don't have in, in the United States. We have an electoral tribunal, right. you know, to deal with this kind of conflicts. It's mm -hmm. a specialized tribunal, right. and we have an institution that deals with the organization of the, of the elections. So, okay. so it's a very important okay. uh, aspect in Mexico. Right. And you've been visiting with our good friend, Mr. Cicero, during your trip here? Is he yes. a, being a gracious host? If oh, not, we yes, give him in trouble. Of course. No, okay. no, no, he's a very <laughs> gracious host. And I'm glad because uh, it's very fortunate because they are now being uh, in the 15th anniversary of the... The 15th anniversary, yeah, of the Hispanic I Bar think, in the state. Yeah. So. Tell us about your association. Uh, it's a li membership limited to... Uh, uh, Hispanic lawyers or? No, it's, it's uh, open to any attorney who wants to be a member. Okay. Um, well, the association began, of course, to open up doors for uh, Latino lawyers, and it's the result of actually the merging of the Latin American uh, Bar Association and the Mexican American Bar Association. Right. Created one larger bar so that it could um, better advocate for the interest um, of Latinos within the legal profession. And right. that's really the, the, the object. One of the big uh, emphasis for us, of course, is uh, making sure that Latinos get into law school and stay in law, stay in law school and graduate from law school. You know, I'm going to give you an invitation right now. <coughs> uh, in the future, the Chicago Bar Association is going to be hosting a forum with law deans where uh, there's a debate justice in our country about whether the law schools are properly telling prospective law students about the realities of uh, their careers and the workplace, and, and uh, the law schools are being attacked a little bit for maybe misrepresenting what those opportunities are, mm -hmm. and this is very important to the Hispanic lawyers because, you know, if we're going to try to recruit Hispanic lawyers to come to law school and then we don't have jobs for them when they get out, what have we done? You know, it's not a proper service. So our forum is going to take place in the spring and I hope you would attend. Absolutely. Because you have a view about that, I'm sure. Oh, we certainly do. And, you know, we're very thankful that, um, uh, well, as you know, the Chicago Bar uh, building is our home as well. I do. So, uh, you know, we actually work very well in tandem with the CBA and the CBA has certainly supported all the work that we do because I think we're moving in the same direction, which is to create more, better equipped attorneys for our community here in Chicago. So uh, the justice is uh, very kind in accepting the CBA and HLEI's invitation to come and help us celebrate our 15th anniversary with the meetings with students and, and the keynote speech right. and all those things. Yeah. Um, uh, justice, did, uh, when, when you decided to come, was there a single message uh, at all that you would like to leave uh, in Chicago? I mean, our great program here is going to, I told you earlier that uh, millions of people will be eventually watching this program. Yes, and uh, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about the, the laws, whether it's American, Canadian, Mexican law. Is, is there something of a, in particular a message you'd like our uh, public to know about uh, Mexico? Uh, of course. First, I apologize because my English is not so good, so I well, can't I apologize because <laughs> my, my, my Spanish is, in, <laughs> no, is in not so good either. But I'm here in your city. Well, uh, the main thing is that uh, I, I have been talking to uh, Mr. Cicero and the other judges, and I think we have to exchange experiences. We have to learn about our legal systems more profoundly. Right. What I have noticed that is that in Mexico, 
few, few lawyers know about your legal system. And here, I think few lawyers know really about our legal system. So, and we are so close related to countries that have a whole history together, you know, so many things that uh, we share that I think it's very important to try to do something serious about this. Well, then, then I think this kind of dialogue, uh, you know, promotes that and, and we should make a commitment to, to have it continue. Right. Uh, and on that score, uh, tell us, uh, you know, the justices here in the U.S. deal both with civil and with criminal matters. Uh, do, does your court decide both civil disputes and criminal disputes? Yes, that's right. Uh, but uh, do, you, uh, do you, when you get a criminal case in, do you say, no, well, I'm a civil specialist, I'm going to give that to Justice, uh, you know, uh, Lopez to handle or something. Do you do anything like that or the court on bank decides these things? Uh, the court on bank decides, but we have a system uh, different than yours. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in my country, you know, cases are uh, put forward to each of the justices right. in a role. Okay. Okay. And they prepare a project of resolution. Okay. Okay. And that's put forward to the whole bank. Right. And then we discuss, as okay. I said, publicly right. and resolve publicly. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, here in the U.S., uh, technology uh, has made such a major difference to not only how we as lawyers practice, but how the courts operate. Is uh, technology having an impact uh, on the transaction of the court's business in Mexico? Oh, yes, of course. Would you explain that? Well, first of all, we have a, a, a whole system uh, to, uh, uh, how could I put it, uh, let, me, let me say it this way, to make procedures much easily, okay? Uh, uh, processar or como Yeah, to process, to process, process procedures, yeah. okay? Right. <coughs> uh, by technology, okay? Right. Uh, we have a, a whole uh, computer system, you know? Right. So you can, you can see from the very beginning, one case to the end of the case, okay? Where is really in that moment, you know. So I could go it, online and look about that? Yes, sure. Yeah. Uh, any member of the public can do any that? Any member. You can go into the website of the right. Supreme Court and and you can find the, all the cases, you know, and exactly where they are. Right, right. Uh, speaking of technology, you have a Facebook page, I hear. Is that right? No, I no, don't. You don't. No, you don't. Okay. I don't. <laughs> Someone told me that you did. That you had a, the, 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 that the justices each are assigned a Facebook. Some of page. them have. Some of them. Okay. Some of them. okay. But I don't. No. I was going to say, are you sending a Facebook page that you're with Sal today and sending off a picture of him? No. <laughs> We're no, checking we in. That. <laughs> We're checking in with you, Bob. We're checking <laughs> in. With, I don't have one of those. I'm afraid of what people if they say, "Holy moly, what about that guy?" <laughs> you know. I noticed that uh, also in uh, your work that your court makes decisions on military law too. Is that right? That's right. And, and human rights issues. Yes, we have a just. Uh, large amendment to the, our constitution in human rights. Tell us about that, Judge. Well, uh, first of all, now treaties, international treaties, are at the same level as constitution is in the matter of human rights. Okay. So there is an obligation to make a conventionality interpretation, you know, in any case that involves human rights. Right. All judges and authorities are a mandatory uh, uh, obliged to uh, make this kind of interpretation right. know, in the best uh, protection of the human rights and the person. Right. So it's really a, a, a huge change in yeah. our legal system. Yeah. 